people will figure out who they are later in life. I, however, was given the gift of perfectionism in preschool. For the past 17 years, I can't exactly make it out if it's a good gift, like something you've been waiting for and finally get to open on Christmas morning, or if it's a bad gift, like another pair of socks. Despite my terrible memory, the day sticks out like a short skirt in front of Miss Chinchuli. <laughs> I weighed no more than 35 pounds and still slept with my blanket, Peter Cottontail. My ears were about the size of my head, and my thin, bleached blonde hair made me look essentially bald. When St. Patrick's Day rolled around at Primrose Day School, my teacher had us color and cut out leprechauns. Being the four-year-old that I was, I did not yet know how to cut precisely. Halfway through my what I thought beautiful project, a couple of kids came over, hovered behind me, and said something that would change my life forever. Why can't you cut on the lines, one of them squeaked. The other snickered behind him. I kept my eyes down, staring at my now becoming tear-stained paper. I don't know how, I replied. Everyone can cut on the lines, they shot back at me. After they giggled and waltzed away, feeling accomplished, something went off inside me. From then on out, I was going to be the best at everything I did, and if I wasn't, I was going to try until I was. Psychologically, perfectionism is, quote, a personality disposition characterized by an individual striving for flawlessness and setting excessively high performance standards, accompanied by overly critical self-evaluations and concerns regarding others' evaluations. It is best conceptualized as a multidimensional characteristic as psychologists tend to agree that there are both negative and positive aspects of perfectionism, end quote. While my positive aspect was my good grades, the, neg the negative effects were something I just figured out at the end of my junior year. I flew through grade school. Making A's was exceptionally easy for me, so being at the top of my class wasn't very hard. In eighth grade, I had 112 in history class. I won my class of spelling bee on multiple occasions, my eyes glowed as I was handed my terrific kid certificate in fifth grade. To prove my preschool bullies that I was going to be the best, I won the Best Artist Award the following year. I know what you're thinking. It doesn't take much to be an artist in kindergarten. To me, it was a huge accomplishment. I kept the same perfectionist persona all the way up to my middle school graduation. And then I came to the Asheville School. If you didn't know it by now, this school is especially challenging. If you don't think it is, please tell me how you do it because I would love the advice. I came here expecting the work to be a little bit harder, but not by much. After Mr. Gardner assigned me my first real paper the first week of school, I realized I was in for much more. To be honest, I was terrified. I had never written a book report, nonetheless a thesis in my life. I was too afraid to ask questions, so I simply didn't. I didn't want people to think that I was anything less than perfect. I had my old reputation to keep up. After getting multiple B's and C's freshman year in more than just English class, I became discouraged. My sophomore year definitely wasn't my best. And if you have Mr. Lambert, Mr. Arbor, or Mr. Perlman, you know it's pretty difficult to get an A without trying your absolute hardest. Well, I gave my best and was sorely disappointed. Because of my perfectionist attitude, I was never satisfied even though I made fairly good grades for the rigorous courses I was taking. I found myself in Mr. Montgomery's office multiple times a week having mental breakdowns over fees. My perfectionism carried over into sports teams. Before the Asheville School, the only team I had ever excelled in or even participated in was cheerleading. I blame my parents for not forcing me into Pee Wee sports. <laughs> With the activity requirements we have here, I had to find something to do. I tried out for volleyball. Wasn't very good. Tried out for basketball wasn't very good. Tried out for soccer. Still wasn't that great. I spent the majority of my sports years sitting on the bench, becoming greatly discouraged with my abilities. My coaches kept telling me it was all about confidence. I knew they were right, but nothing they said changed the way I thought about myself. Until one day, Lauren Brown came to my room and lectured me on confidence. She sat me down like a mother does her child and began explaining to me that my problem wasn't perfectionism. I was too stuck on comparing myself to others that I couldn't focus on bettering myself individually. The people who surrounded me at school had already been pushed in the academic areas before here, and some of the people on my teams had been playing that sport their entire lives. I hadn't. But after she told me all this, I stopped. 
I stopped trying to be better than everyone else. I stopped comparing myself to others. I am the only one who is best at being me. Whether society realizes it or not, today's youth is being pushed to their breaking points. In a Stanford University study, Denise Clark Pope, a lecturer in the School of Education, says that, quote, pressure by parents and schools to achieve top scores has created stress levels among students, beginning as early as elementary school, that are so high that some educators regard it as a health ep epidemic, end quote. Stanford, however, is one of those schools. The average GPA requirement to be accepted to Stanford University is a 4.43, and the average SAT score is a 2190. The study shows that, quote, the number one cause of visits to Vaden Health Center used to be relationships, but now it is stress and anxiety, end quote. So, whether it be grades, physical abilities, or even physical features, don't compare yourself to others. In her lesson, Sonia Darian asks you to stop looking at how others improve and comparing yourself to them, and instead ask yourself, how have you improved? She says that, quote, that's the stuff that counts. Comparing ourselves with someone else is an inaccurate and irrelevant measuring stick, end quote. If you're like me and many other perfectionists in the world, you've, at one or many times in your life, thought you were not good enough. But who's the judge of that? Is the person you're comparing yourself to perfect? Is anyone really perfect? In all honesty, Adam and Eve set us up for disaster from the start. Since then, human perfection is now unreachable. The whole notion of original sin, loss of perfection, and the start of self-consciousness has, ever since they ate the apple of knowledge, caused us to be uncertain of who we truly are. As third formers, we learn that to be fully human, we have to know ourselves. By this, I mean that we need to come to terms with our flaws, but also recognize our strengths. The human condition is a plot to make perfection impossible. We must strive to do our best while understanding that our best will never be perfect. Humans strive to be perfect every day, but the truth is we will never get there. You can do as much as you want to achieve a goal, but you will more than likely be unsatisfied with the outcome because you are comparing yourself to someone who has achieved more. It's the difference between aspirations and reality. If someone you know gets a good grade or accomplishes something you didn't, don't be upset about it. Tell them good job and shake it off. If you don't get into the college of your dreams, you will get into a good school. We as a community need to learn that it is okay to be imperfect. Not only did I stop comparing myself to others, but I also lowered my expectations. By this, I didn't lower my personal standards, but simply accepted reality. With today's society and media, humans have created an illusion to what is perfect. Magazine covers give superficial ideals of perfection, while billionaires flaunt what people believe is perfect lives. In the quote my sister read earlier, Darian points out a truth in that we compare ourselves more often than not to people who have and do more than us. But the next time you find yourself comparing yourself to another person, stop. Consider yourself lucky, because in the words of Dr. Seuss, quote, Today you are you, that is truer than true, there is no one alive who is youer than you.